If you are a new Valheim player building your first house, there are so many ways to go a little bit wrong. You might not realize that you can level ground. You might not understand what the heck level ground actually does. Parts of your house might end up being cold or you might try to build too high and your house crashes down. We've all been there. In today's video, I'll guide you through an easy house build meant for Stone Age players just starting out in the meadows. It'll look good, give you plenty of room for your stuff, and even be big enough to serve as a bunkhouse if you play with a small group. First things first, we need to find a good spot for our house. A couple of things that I look for are an area that's already kind of flat, an area near water, an area near a spot where deer and boar spawn to make it easy to get those leather scraps and deer hide in the early game, and bonus points if you're near the black forest biome, not too close, as that will make the next phase a little bit more convenient. I also look for a site that's near an abandoned shack that you can take over as a temporary house, pop a bed in there, and a crafting table inside. So this here is a pretty good spot that meets those criteria. Get the chopping to clear the area, including the stumps. We're gonna need a ton of wood for this build and try not to die dropping a tree on your own head in the process. Next, we need to prepare our ground. Make a hoe if you don't have one already and pick a spot in your cleared area to start. When you click the level ground, it moves the ground to the level you are standing on. So it's best to level ground in a circle around yourself and move outward from there. Once you have level ground, we can set out our floor plan. We're going to go with a longhouse style with a five by nine layout with a little porch. I'm going to make a bit of a foundation with half walls to deal with any residual uneven ground and then lay out the floor, alternating which way the floor goes to give some visual interest. Kind of like a parquet court like the Boston Celtics. All in all, this design takes about 16 stacks of wood. You're going to get a beautiful home and get your wood cutting skill up as well. Now that we have a floor plan laid out, I'll frame up the walls to define where I want my doors and windows. We're gonna put a bunch of windows in this design, take in the beautiful view. We're also gonna build a campfire in the center of the house with a chimney to expel the smoke. So I'm gonna lay that out as well. Campfires have to be on dirt. So I'm gonna remove a floor tile and raise the ground underneath for fire placement. Now our house is really coming into shape. We have some nice windows framed up for when you want to take a break and gaze upon the beautiful views. Next, we're going to get the doors on, start our chimney, and get our roof framed out.
You can see I've built some scaffolding here to help you get up to the right level to put on the roof. A great trick to learn early on. This roof is getting close to the edge of how many unsupported pieces that you can have in a row. So be careful as you're putting it up to make sure that it doesn't collapse. Since it rained a couple times while we were building this, we'll also have to go around and repair everything with our hammer to make it look good. See this older looking wood down here from sitting out in the rain unsheltered. We now have a great looking shelter, but now we need to make it into a comfy little home. Let's start with the far side from the door, which will be our bedroom. One thing to be aware of in this design is that the tile on each of the far corners is not warmed by the fire. Something to keep in mind as we're placing beds. I'm gonna set up this house with two beds, one for me and one for my lady friend, but there's definitely room for more if you need it. I've added personal storage next to each bed, but we'll add a little bit more storage in a bit. With the bedroom sorted, now we'll turn to our crafting area, which we'll put on the side near the main door. It'll keep our workbench and accessories near each other and give us room to add a forge later on. You also have room for two more chests underneath here if you so desire. We'll also add an expandable storage area in the area next to our fireplace. There is a room for a ton of chests. You shouldn't run out of space to store your excess inventory for quite a while. If you're an actual hoarder, you can make another similar storage area along the opposite wall. And once you get to here, you can always just add on another level. Now we're all set up to store our stuff, sleep, and craft in style. Now we just have one last thing to do to bump up our comfort to five and get an extra minute on that all important rested buff. Slap down the extremely cool deer skin rug and then get a good night's rest in our new home. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Until next time, I'm Dr. Loot Crate and stay stoked out there.